Hello, this is Ali from Team 12635 Curiosity Robotics in Palo Alto, and this is the second video of the software series, Odometry. Odometry is the tracking of the robot's position on the field, and it is very useful for autonomous period in FTC games. Odometry is the use of sensors to estimate position change over time. In the case of an FTC robot, odometry is usually done with at least three rotary wheel encoders that are constantly in contact with the ground to measure position change. The odometry wheels, or pods, are configured in such a way to give enough information to determine the position change of the robot. There are two main steps to odometry, kinematics and integration. In the case of our robot, we have two dead wheel encoders facing front to back and one facing sideways. These wheels are not being driven by a motor and have springs allowing them to remain in contact with the ground so that they are not subject to slip. In order to determine robot velocity using the data from the encoder wheels, we need to do some geometry. The first step is to define the coordinate system, what we're trying to find in the first place. The most logical way to define robot position is through three numbers for X position, Y position, and orientation angle, PSI. For the parameters of the robot, label the distances from the odometry pods to the center. The X prime, Y prime coordinate system is positioned stationarily such that the X prime direction is the front of the robot and the Y prime is the left of the robot. For this setup to work, there must be two odometry pods rolling forwards and one rolling sideways. The forward rolling wheels should be a few inches apart horizontally. Wheel 1 is the left odometry pod with distance D1. Wheel 2 is the right odometry pod with distance D2. And wheel 3 is the back odometry pod facing sideways with a distance of S3. Because we have established the positive directions for X prime and Y prime, the distances D2 and S3 will be negative. We also need to define the variables we know and the variables we are trying to find. The rotational velocity of the three wheels are V psi, 1, 2, and 3, which is what we use to find the robot velocity and then the robot position x, y, and psi. Now is the important task to find the mathematical relationship between wheel velocity and robot velocity. To do this, we can solve a system of linear equations. We first need to find the velocity of the point where the odometry wheel is located in x prime and y prime coordinates. If we take a look at a random wheel, just by knowing its distance from the center s and d, we can determine how the speed of the wheel v, c depends on the speed of the robot. However, the wheel can only revolve in one direction, so the wheel can measure the speed in only one of two directions. We can find the relative motion of the point where the wheel is located, Vc. And depending on the way the wheel is able to rotate, we only care about one of the directions of motion. This equation is found using pure kinematics and geometry, and does not use any path assumptions. By using this formula for each wheel, we can derive three sets of linear equations that tell us how the wheel speeds relate to the robot speed. These sets of equations can be solved to complete the odometry kinematics formulas. To save time, we will show the solution to the system of equations, but it is highly recommended that you try to solve it on your own. All the work required to solve this equation is not shown, but it just uses simple algebra. These formulas tell us the relative velocity of the robot in x, y, and angular coordinates is based on the speeds of the three odometry wheels. However, in order for relative velocity to be useful, we need to be able to convert it to global velocity, where it can be used to determine the robot position. The method to do this is by using a simple geometric transformation to turn relative x and y speeds into global x and y speeds. Using trigonometry, we can rotate the frame of reference to find the true velocity of the robot on the field. And the final step of odometry is integration. This is the process that can use velocity values and use it to calculate the change in position, and then the position of the robot. By multiplying the velocity by time, we can see the distance that the robot has moved. This must be done frequently over a small time step 
for the most accuracy. To summarize, the process of localization uses dead wheel encoder data to find velocity, which is used to generate accurate position estimates. This can easily be implemented onto a robot using some basic code that updates the robot's position real time. That's it for the second video of software on odometry. Thank you for watching.